Chapter 9 For three weeks, Darrell spoke to no one about what happened that morning in English class, not even Harold. Each day, he avoided Amberlynn. He didn't want to embarrass her again. He was sure she wanted to stay away from him, too. She always avoided looking at him. Though sad that he could not talk to her again, he understood and accepted it. She needs to stay away from me, he thought. It's best for both of us. Since he joined the wrestling team, the days passed by in a blur. Each morning, he got up and dragged himself to school. After classes, he forced himself to wrestling practice, and then he trudged home exhausted. At home, he would eat an enormous dinner, struggle to get through his homework, and then fall into a deep sleep. The only thing that helped him mark the passing weeks was Tyree. Every Thursday, Tyree and Rodney warned him in gym class that he better be at the supermarket the next morning. And every Friday, Darrell would show up with his mother's money. Darrell hated the routine, but he was afraid of what Tyree would do if the money stopped coming. The only time Darrell did not think about Tyree was at wrestling practice. As soon as he went into the locker room after school, it was as though he entered another world, a world Tyree could not enter. Practices remained tough, but as the weeks passed, Darrell was slowly getting stronger. After two weeks, he managed to get within a few feet of the gymnasium ceiling on the ropes. The warm-up runs also stopped bothering him. He even improved on the steps, gaining enough strength to carry Craig with more speed and control. But his biggest improvement was in his wrestling skills. After two weeks of steady practice, Darrell had learned five takedown moves, and he was able to demonstrate them to Coach Lewis using Craig as his opponent. His favorite move, the double leg takedown, involved lifting his opponent completely off the ground and then slamming him into the mat. Coach Lewis also taught the team three different ways to pin people. With each move he explained, the coach would also teach the counter move, the way to get away if someone used the move against you. Darrell learned quickly that wrestling was like chess. To master it, you had to use strategy. Craig and Luis had taught him this, too. Though Darrell had never beaten either of them in practice, he had learned how to avoid being pinned, at least most of the time. He still lost constantly, but now it was because his opponents scored more points than he did. Each time they wrestled, Darrell watched what Craig or Luis did to defeat him, and slowly he was becoming more of a challenge for them. Darrell hated losing in practice, but at least he was not being humiliated like he had been on the first day. Once, when Coach Lewis watched, Darrell escaped being pinned by Craig. Coach yelled out, Good job, Darrell. Never stop fighting, even if it looks like your opponent has you beat. He smiled and patted Darrell on the back. You're getting there. You just gotta keep pushing. Next time, you try and pin him. Darrell hoped he would be ready for Blueford's first match against Lincoln High School in two weeks. After practice one day, Darrell was changing back into his clothes when the kid with the shaved head walked by on his way to his locker. Darrell had learned from Luis that his name was Kevin, and he was a junior at Blueford. Luis also told him that Kevin was one of the best wrestlers in the school and had gone to the city finals last year. When Kevin walked past him, Darrell pretended he did not notice. Then he heard a deep voice next to him. Hey, Darrell. Darrell turned to face Kevin. He was about Tyree's size, maybe a little bigger. Yeah? Darrell asked nervously. Good job today, Kevin said and walked out. On Saturday after wrestling practice, Darrell ran into Jamie at the supermarket. He had gone to the store to buy more bread for his sandwiches. His mother still did not notice that he was making his own lunch each day. All she knew was that bread in her house seemed to disappear overnight. You must be growing now, baby, she said to him when she gave him the money for the bread. Because I can't keep food in this house more than a day or two before it's gone. When he saw Jamie, Darrell wanted to leave, but he was stuck in the middle of a long line with nowhere to go. Hey, Darrell, Jamie said as she walked over to him. Hi, Jamie, what's up? 
he asked. Daryl had not ever said more than three words to her at any one time. Jamie must think I'm a fool, too, he thought. Daryl, I just want you to know Amberlynn feels real bad about what happened in class that day with Tyrae. She didn't mean anything she said. She was just acting that way because everyone was staring at her and she was embarrassed. Yeah, right, Daryl replied. Really, it's true. Amberlynn likes you. She told me she thought you were a really nice guy, and she doesn't like how things have been between you two. But she's afraid to talk to you because she thinks you hate her because of what she did, Jamie insisted. She thinks I hate her? I thought she hated me. Listen, Daryl, Amberlynn thinks you're a nice guy, and if you talk to her, you find out. Then both of you can stop feeling bad about what happened. But if I were you, I wouldn't talk to her in class. I think Tyre kind of likes Amberlynn, and if he sees you talking to her, he's going to start trouble all over again. Jamie rolled her eyes as she mentioned Tyre. So what am I supposed to do? Pretend I don't know her? Daryl asked angrily. You gotta find a way to see her where you can talk. She paused for a minute. Why don't you go to the freshman dance? It's the Friday before Christmas break. I'll make sure she's there. Just then, Jamie glanced at her watch. I have to go now to meet my sister. Just make sure you come to the dance, she instructed and walked out. Watching Jamie leave, Daryl thought about what she said. Could it be true that Amberlynn really liked him? Part of him wondered if Jamie was lying, but another part of him was full of hope. He had not been to a dance since eighth grade. Back then, Malik, Reggie, and Mark were with him. They'd sit around and talk more than anything else. This dance would be different. Daryl would not have his old friends, but Amber Lynn would be there. He pictured himself dancing with her, and his heart raced. He had to go to the dance. He just had to go. But what if Tyre came to the dance? Daryl knew he could not be seen with Amber Lynn if Tyre showed up. As he paid for the bread, Daryl wondered what he would do about the dance. He realized he still had a week to think about it while his first wrestling match was less than a week away. For now, he would put the dance out of his mind. The night before his first match, Daryl dreamed he was wrestling Tyre in front of a crowd of Blueford students. Tyre, with incredible speed, easily tossed Daryl around the mat and pinned him right in front of Amberlynn, who laughed loudly as he was pinned. Daryl woke up struggling to free himself from his blanket. He was relieved he had only been dreaming, but he dreaded the match to come. Yet Daryl had been getting better in each practice. Three days before the match, he had managed to climb to the top of the ropes for the first time. Though still unable to beat Craig or Luis, he did manage to flip Luis onto his back for a second. Even Luis seemed surprised when it happened. Also, Daryl and Coach Lewis had recently discovered that Daryl was fast. Although he was not as strong as the other kids on the team, he was quicker. The coach told him speed could make him hard to beat. Daryl liked to think that he had something other kids did not have. It was the first time he felt that his size was not hindering him. What made Daryl even happier was his weight. All wrestlers had to weigh themselves before the match with Lincoln to make sure they were in the right weight group. When Daryl stepped on the scale, he discovered he had gained several pounds since he joined the team four weeks ago. He now weighed nearly 115 pounds. Mom's right, he thought when he looked at the scale. I'm finally growing. And there was no fat anywhere on his body. The day of the match, Daryl walked in and out of classrooms like a zombie. His mother promised him she would come to see him wrestle, and Daryl knew she would bring Uncle Jason. Besides them, dozens of Blueford students would be there watching him. Maybe even Amber Lynn. He was so nervous that he could barely eat the sandwiches he had packed that morning. At the end of his last class, Daryl walked to his locker and then to the gym to prepare for the match. One thought kept replaying itself in his mind. I'm gonna lose. Not only was he going to lose, he thought, but he was going to humiliate himself. As he changed into his blue and gold wrestling uniform, 
Darrell wanted to go home and crawl into his bed. He didn't want to go out and wrestle. As he sat on the bench, he felt someone nudge his shoulder. You okay? A voice said. Darrell turned around to see Kevin looking at him. Nervous? Kevin asked. Darrell nodded. I remember my first match, Kevin said. I was so scared I wanted to throw up. But as soon as I got started, I was fine. You'll be all right. Just remember one thing. It's your first match, so no one is going to expect you to be an expert. Good luck. Thanks, Darrell replied. It was good to hear Kevin's advice, but Darrell didn't think he had anything in common with a champion wrestler. It was time for the matches to begin. They were divided into three parts. First, the inexperienced wrestlers from both high schools would have their matches. After that, the junior varsity and varsity teams would wrestle. Since Darrell was so light, his match would be among the first ones. Coach Lewis came over to talk to him just before his match. Listen, Darrell, you've come a long way in the past month. You work hard, and I'm impressed with your progress. Now, I know you're nervous. It's normal. The kid you're wrestling is new and as nervous as you. Use your speed and remember the moves we practiced, and you'll be fine. If he starts overpowering you, don't give up. Sometimes you can beat a stronger guy by just waiting for him to make a mistake. Just go out and do your best, Coach Lewis advised. The coach slapped Darrell's back. Darrell slowly walked onto the mat. The Bluford crowd cheered as Darrell walked out. He could see his uncle and mother sitting next to each other in the bleachers. What am I doing? Darrell mumbled to himself as he walked to the center of the mat. His opponent came out to meet him. The boy was slightly shorter than Darrell, but a bit more muscular. Each boy put a foot on the starting marker. Darrell thought he was going to pass out. Come on, Darrell, his mother cheered in the distance. Then the whistle blew. In a flash, the boy from Lincoln locked arms with Darrell. Alternately, each boy tried to throw the other to the mat. When Darrell tried to muscle his opponent aside, the boy barely budged. He's much stronger than me, Darrell thought. The boy tried to sweep in underneath Darrell to lift him up, but Darrell figured out what he was doing and escaped. Then Darrell tried his favorite move, the double leg takedown. Quickly, he darted beneath the shorter boy grabbed his legs and lifted him. The Blueford fans cheered as Darrell hoisted his opponent off the ground and rolled him onto the mat. Darrell knew the move scored him two points. He was winning. Just then, the whistle sounded. The first two-minute round was over. Only two more rounds to go, Darrell thought. The referee waited for the boys to get in the starting position and blew the whistle. Instantly, the two wrestlers grappled with each other. Darrell struggled to find a way to flip his opponent onto his back, but the shorter boy's strength made it impossible for him to do anything. As Darrell fought to put the boy in a headlock, he escaped and flipped Darrell onto his side. That's one point for Lincoln, the referee said. Before he knew what was happening, Darrell found himself crushed under his opponent, who was desperately trying to put him in a move of his own. Darrell rolled onto his stomach to avoid being flipped over. Don't get trapped, Darrell, Coach Lewis yelled. The boy from Lincoln was fast. He wrapped his legs around Darrell in a move the coach called a grapevine. The move took away Darrell's leverage, so he had no way to stop himself from being rolled onto his back. Each second they wrestled, the boy seemed to lock up another one of Darrell's limbs. Darrell felt himself being tilted over. Stay off your back, Coach Lewis screamed. Darrell was exhausted. His back was being wrenched and twisted. One of his arms was trapped, and his legs felt like they were chained to a wall. He flailed out his free arm, trying to get a hold of the mat to free himself, but it didn't help. He felt like a bug squashed under his shoe. This is it, Darrell thought. This is where I lose in front of everyone. Then the whistle blew. The second round had ended. Darrell managed to avoid being pinned, but the boy from Lincoln had scored two points for nearly pinning him. Remember what I said, Darrell. Use your head. You can still win, Coach Lewis instructed. Darrell got back into the starting position for the final round. Again, the whistle blew. Almost instantly, the boy seized Darrell and tried to flip him. This time, he used a move called the cradle. 
one which Craig had often used against him. Daryl groaned as the boy's forehead jammed into his ribcage. He wanted to give up. If he just allowed the boy to pin him, it would all be over. Use your head, Daryl. You can beat him, Coach Lewis screamed in the distance. Everything seemed to pass in slow motion. Daryl could feel his opponent's arm wrapping under his leg. He felt the impact as the boy drove into his side, forcing him into the mat. He could almost see the whole match as it would appear from the stands. Come on, Daryl, Coach Lewis screamed. To Daryl, he sounded like he was miles away. Daryl raised his head and looked over at the stands. The Blueford side was filled with people yelling. Their voices blurred together so he could not understand what they were saying. He wondered if Amber Lynn was out there watching him lose. Do something! The boy began tightening his hold on Daryl. One minute left, the referee yelled. Here I am again, Daryl thought. The boy's grip tightened, and Daryl felt himself being thrown onto his side. This is what I wanted to stop, but here I am again. I'm still losing. The thought filled him with a spark of anger. He had not been going to practice for a month just so he could sit in front of his mother and lose. The boy drove into Daryl, rolling him towards his back. One of Daryl's shoulder blades touched the mat. He knew he was about to be pinned. That's two points for Lincoln, the referee said. Daryl, get up, coach yelled. Fans on the Lincoln side of the gym cheered. I gotta stop this, bubbled a voice from inside Daryl. I gotta do something. Daryl noticed the boy was preparing to drive him sideways to flip him up and pin him. Coach Lewis had taught the team a counter move in practice. To use it, Daryl would have to roll with the force of his opponent's drive. If he timed it right, the boy's own force would carry him right over, leaving Daryl above him and in control. It was Daryl's only chance. The boy leaned back and drove with all his force into Daryl's side to flip him. Daryl rolled with the same drive. Without the resistance of Daryl's body, the Lincoln boy's force carried him right over Daryl. Immediately, the boys switched positions. Daryl now was over his opponent. Quickly, he started wrapping the boy into a cradle of his own. The Blueford crowd roared. The referee signaled that Daryl scored a point, but then he blew the whistle. The match was over. Daryl had lost by two points. As he walked back to his teammates, Coach Lewis came over to him. Good first match, Daryl. You would have had that Lincoln boy beat if you had another minute. But he beat you because you stopped trying in the second round. Remember that. You can't win if you don't do anything. Then you're just defeating yourself when your opponent doesn't have to work at all. As soon as you used your head and started wrestling him, you turned everything around. Keep that in mind, Daryl. Next time, I want you to use your head for the entire match, not just the last minute, okay? Daryl nodded. The advice sounded familiar. It was what he read weeks ago in Hatchet. Brian had said the same thing about surviving and about change. It was the same idea that got Daryl to join the wrestling team in the first place. In order to win, to change, to succeed, you have to work at it. That was what the coach had said. That was what he had read in Hatchet. He thought of Amber Lynn and Tyree. I still have work to do, he thought. Lots of work. He was relieved that his first match was finally over. As odd as it sounded to him, he was a Blueford wrestler. For a moment, he felt proud. At least I wasn't completely humiliated, and I even had a chance to win, he thought. He was eager to practice harder. He wanted to be Blueford's best wrestler. For the rest of the evening, Darrow watched the other members of his team wrestle. In the crowd, he spotted Amber Lynn and Jamie. They didn't seem to notice him, but he remembered what Amber Lynn said, how she loved to watch wrestling. Looking at her talking to Jamie, Daryl knew he had to go to the dance. Even if Tyree would be there, he had to go. Otherwise, he thought, it would be just like what Coach Lewis said. If he didn't do anything, he would just be defeating himself. After the match, Daryl met his mother and his Uncle Jason. Daryl, I am so proud of you. You look great out there, his mother said, giving him a hug. 
the three of them left the building and started walking back home from Blueford. Yeah, Daryl, you look pretty good for a few minutes, Uncle Jason added. But that boy had you beat. You've got to improve your strength if you want to win on the mat. Daryl looked over at his uncle. He knew part of what Uncle Jason said was right, but he resented him for saying it. Why do you always want to make me feel bad? Daryl wanted to ask. Instead, he said, It was my first match. The coach said it was good for my first time. His uncle nodded. He's right, but you can't just roll around and expect to win. When I wrestled, we had a guy on the team who flopped around in almost every match, never doing anything to win. We used to call him Fish because all he did was flip-flop on the mat like a fish out of water. Uncle Jason laughed. We teased him every day about that. I don't want you wrestling like old fish. Daryl, I think you were great, his mother cut in. I was proud to be your mama. Daryl could barely hear her. His mind was still on what his uncle had said. Uncle Jason's comment made him feel as though all the work he had done for the past month was for nothing. He imagined what he must have looked like on the mat, how foolish he seemed in front of Amber Lynn. Nothing had changed. He was still the same scared kid from Philadelphia. Rage boiled in his chest. He hated his uncle for robbing him of the one moment when he was almost pleased with himself. Darrell wished Uncle Jason had not come to the match. He wished he was not his uncle. As Darrell fought to control his temper, his uncle continued talking. And one more thing, Darrell. The way you... You ain't my coach, Darrell interrupted. They had reached his uncle's driveway. What? Uncle Jason asked. He turned his head to look at his nephew. You ain't my coach, so I don't need your advice, okay? Daryl, don't you be rude to your uncle. He's only trying to help you, his mother snapped. I didn't ask for his help, Mom. Look at me. Do I need to hear from him that I look bad on the mat? Do I need to be told that I'm no good? I know it already. He don't need to say it. Daryl stormed toward the apartment door. Uncle Jason stood there in the driveway, shaking his head. I'm only trying to give the boy some pointers, that's all. What's his problem, Jackie? Daryl slammed the door behind him. He was not going to talk to his uncle again.